Good evening, Robert Scriveler. It is October 16th, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I am going to talk about a big weather flip-flop that's ongoing in the United States, where we have a deep trough digging in over parts of the country, even as other parts of the country and other parts of the world heat up. Over the next couple of days, this trough is expected to shift to the east and bring below freezing temperatures to parts of the Ohio Valley and into the northeast. And this temperature map is looking at the morning of the 18th, so that would be Thursday morning, showing below freezing temperatures in the range of about negative 1.5 degrees Celsius or 29.3 degrees Fahrenheit over parts of Ohio on Thursday. And I'd just like to point out that these temperatures over Ohio are colder than if you go all the way up past Greenland into the Arctic Circle to Svalbard. And if you look at uh, parts of Svalbard here are warmer than they are expected to be on Thursday morning at the same time in Ohio. So this cold snap that's running in through the central U.S. now that's predicted to shift east, which is going to bring much cooler than normal temperatures to the U.S. east, is a, an aspect of, of the climate system that we have seen recently where when you have tended to see very warm temperatures or much warmer than normal temperatures in the Arctic region, that you tend to get Arctic air driven out and to the south, as we are seeing now over the Canadian archipelago and, and in the forecast over the next couple of days, down into the Hudson Bay region, into Eastern Canada, and also into, into the Eastern US. So we've had a lot of chatter about this on Twitter. Guy Walton, who's a, a former Weather Channel uh, researcher, looked at this pattern and says, well, this looks very odd to me. And that's an understandable reaction because you've got much cooler than normal conditions in, in parts of the US, but, but very hot, I'm sorry, not very hot, much warmer than normal temperatures in other parts of the world, such as Europe, in, in very hot temperatures in Florida and in the southeast, and much, much warmer than normal temperatures over the Arctic. Looking at another map provided by Bob Henson, I'm gonna just give a hat, te hat tip to Bob Henson over at uh, Weather Other Underground, and who is also a, a weather expert, um, shows that, that, that a uh, NOAA eight to 10 day outlook is predicting much, much warmer than normal temperatures for the U.S. West, in particular over parts of Montana and Washington, Oregon, and, and up, up into the Canadian border region, as well as into Alaska with much colder than normal conditions for the U.S. East as part of this emerging dipole pattern. So let's talk about what's happening. What's happening is we have a high amplitude jet stream wave pattern with a, with a strong ridge starting to develop over the Pacific Northwest and, and British Columbia and up, up running up in through, through Western Canada in the Northwestern Territory, territory with, a, with a deeper trough starting to develop through the central and eastern U.S. This pattern is expected to continue for the next eight to ten days bringing Arctic air down to the south, even as much, much warmer than normal temperatures invade the Arctic. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this GFS model to show the expected trends for the ridge and trough pattern. So as you see the ridge continuing to maintain for the US West over the next few days, and on in through the next 10 day period with a ridge starting to shift a little bit more to the central US by the latter portion of the period. 
So I'm just gonna run this back and I'm gonna flip over to temperature anomalies so that we can look at where it's expected to be warmer than normal and where it's expected to be colder than normal. So looking at the zero hour, we see that the Arctic is, is much warmer than normal, about 4.5 degrees Celsius above average for the entire Arctic, which is, is just con very considerable heat transfer into the Arctic. Doesn't mean that it's not cold in the Arctic, but what it does mean is much, much warmer than normal in the Arctic in the range of about five to 15, possibly even as high as 20 degrees Celsius above average for parts of the Arctic at this time. And this pattern is generally expected to remain the same with a lot of, look at, look at this intensity of, of these above normal temperatures exploding in through the Northwestern US, in through British Columbia and in through Alaska over the next few days. And just flaring again, and again and again along this ridge pattern even as arctic temperatures remain much much warmer than normal in the range of 3.5 to more than four and a half degrees celsius above average in some instances and then toward the latter portion of the period the heat shifts into the central portion of the continent with the central u.s and central canada seeing more heat as heat conti uh, much warmer than normal temperatures continue to maintain through the Arctic, but as the east remains cooler than normal in conjunction with that persistent trough pattern that we have talked about before. I'd just like to point out that these high amplitude jet stream waves, this energy transfer into the Arctic and, and, and the big dips in the jet stream moving Arctic air out of the Arctic and into the middle latitudes during fall and winter is something that climate scientists such as Jennifer Francis and Dr. Michael Mann, uh, Dr. Jennifer Francis and Dr. Michael Mann have pointed out as a, a potential aspect of human-caused climate change where warming at the pole tends to generate higher amplitude jet stream wave features which can produce these really deep troughs and these very extreme dipole patterns where it's very warm in one section of, of continental North America or continental Europe or continental Asia and very cold in another section as Arctic air, cold Arctic air is driven out by, by, by heat transfer into the Arctic, which, which displaces this colder air. And we're, we're st starting to see this pattern now. Uh, we've seen it in a number of instances over the past few years and and it's likely that we'll, we'll start to see these kinds of patterns reinforce as we get further into fall and further into winter. I'd just like to emphasize that if you're in one of these trough zones and it's cold where you are, it doesn't mean that, that global warming has stopped. Uh, global warming is, is an ongoing feature and, and has not stopped. And what you're experiencing is, is cold air being driven out of the Arctic by warm air energy transfer into the Arctic which is an aspect of what is known as polar amplification, where the poles, and in particular the Arctic, heats up faster than the rest of the globe as a result of human forced climate change. So some extreme weather and extreme temperature features likely to occur over the next week to, to 10 day period. So something to keep an eye on and to stay alert to, but also stay alert to the bigger picture when it comes to where these extreme weather features are coming from. And, and, and in many cases, we, we do need to look at the Arctic and see how the Arctic is influencing our present weather and climate patterns, in particular, how polar warming and polar amplification is influencing those patterns. Thank you for joining me and I'll be chatting with you soon.